So good morning, everybody. And um, before we start, I want to particularly thank uh, Anthony Vetro and uh, Phillips, Elizabeth Phillips, who were the, sort of the, the arrangement chairs for this event and did a fantastic job. So yes, welcome everyone to our 25th anniversary. Uh, a couple of slides here of some of the notable people that will be here. Uh, Himano-san, the Consulate General from uh, Japan in Boston, will be here later today. He couldn't be here this morning. We have uh, Dr. Uh, Nomakuchi, uh, Executive Corporate Advisor to Mitsubishi Electric, Kenji Kondo, the head of CRND, who you know, Takashi Mizuochi, the uh, second in command of CRND, Horikawa-san, the U.S. President, uh, Brian Heary, the president of MEPI, uh, many other visitors from Mitsubishi Electric and the U.S. operations, and visitors from other Mitsubishi companies. We also have Professor Bert Simmes, our, key, our, next, our first keynote speaker from MIT, uh, our distinguished panelists that we'll have all during the afternoon, and uh, a number of professors that we're collaborating with from Merle. Uh, Almost all, all but one of our former Merle EVPs are here um, uh, in reverse chronological order. Fujita-san, who many of you uh, know, uh, Iwasaki-san. Uh, Fujita-san is now head of ATC. Uh, Iwasaki-san was head of the mechatronics lab at ATC. Kamiyano-san, who works, still works for Melco in the Human uh, Resources Development Center. And Sakaguchi-san, Haratsuka-san, who are re retired from Melco but are joining us here today. Uh, various other Merle uh, alumni, particularly who become professors other places, and all Merle employees, interns, everyone who's here. So what have these last 25 years been for Merle? They've been a journey on multiple dimensions. Uh, many notable inventions that have happened here, uh, a corporate journey of mergers and moves from one place to another, which some of you know and many of you don't. Uh, changes in the way we interact with Mitsubishi Electric over the years. Changes in the focus of our research. Uh, Merle has improved in many ways on these journeys, and we will continue to improve as we go forward. First, I'm very happy this, this booklet that you're all getting a copy of. Uh, shows a lot about what our current work is and a lot of our notable uh, past work. In the back, it lists some of our notable publications, 12 of which have been cited more than 1,000 times and one almost 10,000 times. And after lunchtime, we'll have a research showcase. You can see uh, a number of our current projects. Now first, our corporate history. So before Merle was founded, the, the earth did not begin at Merle, <laughs> even though I know many of you think it did. So before there, were Mer there was Merle, there were two labs, a rise in research in Waltham and a lab in Sunnyvale. This was started by the computer business unit and designed mid-range computer hardware, IBM compatible hardware. This lab in California was from the semiconductor business unit and made semiconductor design tools. They were pre-existing. Then, in 1991, Corporate R&D founded Merle here in Cambridge to do, excuse me, longer-term research. Then, uh, somewhat later, a uh, lab was started in uh, Murray Hill, New Jersey, the Advanced TV Laboratory, started by the, uh, the AV business, the TV business of Melco, to work on HDTV design. And they made, they worked with Bell Labs to make the first chipset capable of receiving US HDTV signals. Then the next major event in 1995, these three other labs merged together to make a new organization, Mitsubishi Electric Information Technology Center America, MITCA, uh, which we just called uh, ITA instead. It was easier to pronounce. And these labs became ITA, ATL, ATS Sunnyvale, ATL, ITA, HSL. A year after that, Merle merged into ITA. And we were very separate organizations. We were four organizations in four places. We really didn't interact very much. So 
Merle really, we were legally together, but we were separate. The next event in 1998, an effort called the Volume Graphics Organization started at Merle in Cambridge on the seventh floor. When we first took seventh floor place, that was there. And that was making a volume graphics rendering chip. Then the next event, during the dot-com boom, <clears throat> the Sunnyvale Laboratory evaporated. The average turnover at, uh, out in California at that time went to more than 100% a year. So you had to hire all new employees basically every year. And we lost the director of that laboratory. And without the director, it took a long time to hire a new director. And then we couldn't hire very many employees. So eventually, no employees, no lab, it closed. <laughs> you know, that's, it was amazing in the ferment. Uh, then uh, the next event to happen is this volume graphics organization moved out of Cambridge into separate quarters in Concord, Mass, to pursue commercialization of this chip. It was hoped that this chip would be sold by Melco's semiconductor division. And everyone that was in Waltham, Mass, and Horizon moved to Cambridge. And then we had, in Cambridge, two labs in the same premises, uh, Merle CRL, the Cambridge Research Lab, and the Cambridge Systems Lab. Now, a key motivation for this was really realizing uh, that when people are geographically separated, they really don't work together. Uh, moving people together in the same building really allowed collaboration to happen in a totally different way. Then next, it turns out that the Melka Semicar Division decided not to enter the market for graphics rendering chips. Probably a good idea because there was way too much competition in that field. Uh, spun out into a separate company called RTViz which was eventually bought by a company called Terra Recon and still exists. Uh, OK. Then in 2003, uh, moved, everyone in New Jersey moved to Cambridge on the same basic theory that we could all work together better if we were in the same building, which we can. Uh, sort of, we ended up still where we were two laboratories, the Merle Re uh, MRL and MTL, Merle Technology Laboratory. Then the next big step, in 2007, it was recognized that this separation between two laboratories was just historical and was an impediment to really full collaboration. And there was no basic basis for it. And we reorganized into the five basic groups that we have today. And we've been that way ever since. OK. So that's one story of our history. This is another story of our, fishing, our history. So Dr. Nita, who started Merle, uh, really did, uh, you know, sort of a stranger in a strange land. He came over here and started Merle from nothing. It was very impressive. But one thing he had, sort of an image of what was going to happen here, he had this phrase, Merle should make new fish for the sea. It's Mitsubishi Electric's responsibility to catch these fish. This is sort of a, a very kind of interacting with Merle the way you might interact with a university. So what happened from that? Well, the basic thing happens, it happens with universities. We made lots of fish, and we threw them in the sea. And Mitsubishi Electric did not catch very many of our fish. <laughs> so uh, after a while, it was clear that that was really not the best model. So around uh, in the 2000s, when I became president of Merle, <laughs> in fact, actually, we had a different uh, way of saying this, actually. We said that. We should make fish. We should put the fish in a barrel. We should give Mitsubishi Electric a shotgun to get the fish. <laughs> and when we did that, uh, Mitsubishi Electric did catch more of our fish. But our fish were not really quite the right fish. A and what are these colors? So blue fish are fishes that really fit with Mitsubishi's current or future business that will be a strong business. And we were making lots of interesting fish but not very many fish that really fit that bill. So we had more impact on Merle than before, but a lot of those impacts were small. Still not the best thing. Uh, and actually, and then, uh, in many ways, Dr. Kuma came around. And he said, small impacts, not good impacts. <laughs> so we changed our model uh, yet again, that we really need to make fish that are really are tailored to Mitsubishi Electric's current and future main business. And we need to work hard to get those fish to Mitsubishi Electric. And that's where we are today. 
And we're, we're making a variety of fishes. Many more of those fishes are more appropriate for Mitsubishi Electric. And I think this is a, an important lesson over those 25 years. I think this is a, an important model that can work well for research labs. And that first model is not such a good model. Then a, another way to tell this tale is the following, this following Venn, Venn diagram. If you look at three key things, what it is that Merle is capable of doing well? Where are there really opportunities for anybody to do well in a scientific technical area? And what is related to Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Electric's business, particularly its strong current and future business? Now, obviously, where we want to be is in here. Uh, it's not any good for us to be someplace where we don't have good capabilities. It's not so good to be in a place where there's not good research opportunities. It's not good to be in a place where we're not related to Melco's business. So we want to be here. This is sort of our trajectory. When we started in 1991, we were kind of over here, making fishes. And as the year has, has gone on, we have moved strongly in this direction. And where we plan to continue to go is move Merle, actually a, a subtle difference between these two slides <laughs> that may be missed is as we hire new people and do new things like start the mechatronics group, our circle has moved to more overlap with Melco, which is a good thing. And in the future, expect that to continue as Melco grows and we're a key part of Melco growing. So that is, that's three stories, a fourth story of how we've gone and how we've changed. Two key, I think, measures in any research lab is what is the technical depth of our work? And second, what is the relevance to our main business? And our impact on the company is somehow kind of related to the product of those numbers. All right? And well, we started out in 1991. In truth, for the first year or two, all we were doing is deciding where the walls should be and what color the carpet should be and how to hire more employees. And not very much was happening in the very beginning. But we rapidly got to a point where we were doing things with good technical depth, but not very related to the business. Then we moved to much more relevance to the business, but I think the depth became somewhat less. Uh, now, in, more, in the last five years or so, we've moved to uh, further increased relevance and further increased depth. And that's the direction I believe we need to be continue to head in order to have the maximum benefit to Melco. Then, a lot of words here, but this is a this is a mission statement that we came up with some years ago, and I think it is still very accurate. So what's our mission? What's our assignment from Mitsubishi Electric? What do they expect us to do? And that is to generate new technology and intellectual property in areas of importance to Mitsubishi Electric. And to significantly impact Mitsubishi Electric's business using our technical expertise in partnership with organizations in Mitsubishi Electric to produce new and improved products and services in Mitsubishi Electric's current and future main business areas. I think that's, that is fundamentally why they're paying us money. Our vision, our goal for ourselves, how do we think about it? How are we thinking of satisfying this mission? That is by being one of the world's premier research laboratories, doing long-term fundamental research that advances the frontiers of technology and makes lasting impacts on the world. And also, being the prime source of technology for Mitsubishi Electric in our areas of expertise. And I think we are succeeding in doing these things and is our goal to continue to do so. And lastly, our values, sort of how do we operate internally? internally. And that is by hiring very high quality researchers and supporting them strongly with a flexible and supportive work environment featuring teamwork both inside Merle and with our colleagues at Mitsubishi Electric, and participating in the world research community, publishing our work while maintaining the confidentiality of business information, and collaborating with interns and university researchers. And I think, as I said, these words were written, I don't know exactly when, five or 10 years ago. I think they are still very true today. So looking toward the future, 
I believe strongly that by maintaining our mission and vision and values and increasing our focus on Mitsubishi Electric and increasing the disruptive nature of our research, we will produce research at the frontier of technology, increase our impact on Mitsubishi Electric, achieve more in the next 25 years than in the last 25 years. I think Merle is fertile ground for doing great things. In a key thing, the way we arrange this whole day is with speakers, with panels, where we can spend the rest of the day just talking about the kind of issues that will help us do a good job of planning what to do over the next five or 10 years. So one of the things we have made for this event is we've made a short video sort of introducing Mitsubishi Electric, which we plan to use on our website, and I'll, we'll show to you now. Merle, Mitsubishi Electric Research Laboratories, was founded right here in Cambridge, Mass, 25 years ago by Mitsubishi Electric. We're here specifically to do research to both advance the frontiers of science and to produce a really good technology that will go in Mitsubishi Electric's products. Merle is a place which allows you to freely think, imagine, and try to come up with ideas, and that's very much encouraged. It's a very good environment for doing basic research, at the same time keeping in mind how this would apply to the businesses that Merle has and to society at large. It's math and it's algorithms, and uh, we implement it in software, and uh, we then test it to verify and validate. There's no competition. We just exchange ideas. We're not rewarded for being individualistic. You can walk next door to your neighbor who's working in a very different project and who can contribute a method or a, a, an idea. So the project is definitely influenced by others whose experience in their respective projects is very different. This combination of long-term support, encouragement for collaboration, copious publication, I think that's the only way to move science forward. I want to learn new things all the time, so I don't see this as, as a work is pure joy. Getting something which could not be done before, I really passionately enjoy it. It's a great fun. Being able to contribute to something at a fundamental level and knowing that you're solving a problem is very important. It's really a nice setup that we have here, and I do think it's probably unique in terms of research labs. Everybody has time to just pursue crazy ideas that they have in the shower some morning. And the only thing that we ask is when they discover that the idea isn't any good, switch to a different one. It's out of that ferment that the good ideas that we spend a lot more time on come. There's a level of uh, respect and maturity between the management and the uh, researchers at Merle. We have the ability to do what we think is good and useful. Right now, we have to read articles as they're um, being posted to the web before they're even published because things are moving so quickly that uh, something that was invented six months ago is already the old way of doing it. A number of fundamental uh, questions that I, would, uh, that I would like to answer from a mathematical standpoint. And those are some questions that go beyond the particular application that I'm looking at and just cover all possible applications and I definitely feel like I, I am creating tomorrow's technology today. Creating tomorrow today, we cannot only do the things other people are doing today. We need to think a step ahead. Creating tomorrow today, for me, means imagine a better future and think what tools we have now, what knowledge do we have now to integrate these things into a better version of that future. The dream of everyone here is that we might do something that our grandchildren would actually know we did. Tomorrow's existed for 25 years. It's been a great ride that uh, will continue for the next 25. So, and thanks to all the actors in that. <laughs> so what's next today? What's, your program tells everything about what's next today. We have uh, various panels, two keynote speakers, uh, before the next uh, keynote speaker, I want to introduce uh, Dr. Nomakuchi, who is here today. And the key thing about Dr. Nomakuchi is he's had a very long relationship with Merle. He was in the key group of people that worked to found Merle in the first place. He was the number two at CRD in 1991 when Merle was founded. He was, I remember well, my office used to be a conference room back then, and he came out that first summer and looked at a presentation that we were making that we were going to go to Japan and present what are the plans for Merle. 
and I remember talking to one of our uh, 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 Japanese researchers with us at the time, Hide Okame. I said, oh, Jesus, it's not ready. It's not good enough. I, I can't show it now. I'm all upset. And he said, you don't understand. You don't understand. It's good. He knows it's not done yet. Because he knows that, he can freely comment on it. And if he thought you were done, it might be embarrassing and he wouldn't tell you. So thank God you're not done. And I'm glad it was not done because it wasn't too good and we needed the advice. After that, uh, Dr. Nomakeshi became head of ATC and then head of CR&D. And then he spent a time as head of IS Han. Then he became president of Mitsubishi Electric and then chairman. And now he's an executive corporate advisor to Mitsubishi Electric. He's had a very long career at Mitsubishi Electric and a long relationship with Merle. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good morning to all the guests and all of Mar. Congratulations. I'm Noma Kuchi. Let me make some words to con congratulate the 25th anniversary. I am very happy and also honored to be able to attend the ceremony for our 25th anniversary, as well as for this opportunity to greet everyone. In fact, I Oh, yes. I also attended the fifth anniversary ceremony for Mar. The souvenir clock I was given at that time is still ticking accurately. in my living room or my home. I don't know whether it was made in China or <laughs> made in the, the United States. But it seems to have the same level of quality as Mitsubishi Electric does. I served as president and CEO, chairman of the board of Mitsubishi Electric. And now uh, I serving as uh, uh, executive corporate advisor. However, 25 years ago, I was the deputy general manager of the planning department corporate R&D to support the global expansion of Mitsubishi Electric's business, I was in charge of a project to establish an advanced research uh, center in the United States, which was especially focused on IT technology. We selected five or six candidate, candidate locations on the east coast, on the west coast, and in the southern area of the United States. Before choosing, finally choosing Boston, integrating academia and high technology industries are the optimal place. MAR started operation in 1991 with Mr. Lazaro Berardi, worldwide very famous computer scientist as chairman, and Dr. Tohei Nitta as president. After several years, management scheme was changed 
from chairman president system to president vice president system. The current president and the CEO, Dr. Dick Waters, was one of the few one uh, one of the few members at the time of its founding. He had a much younger appearance <laughs> than he does now, and he was an excellent researcher. Mao absorbed other, as he said, uh, technology units of Mitsubishi Electric in the United States, and States under the leadership of Dr. Waters. And Mao has been leading uh, this research in North America for Mitsubishi Electric. Mitsubishi Electric has maintained strong and consistent business even now since the turn around in the second year of my presidency. In the world of electrical and electronic manufacturers enterprises, Mitsubishi Electric has earned a reputation as one of the most soundest companies. The biggest driving force is a vast number of achievements attained by the research center of corporate R&D, such as MAR. MAR has contributed to the improvement of our core businesses in the world market, especially in factory automation, automotive electronics, power systems, and so on. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks and respect to Mar. And I looked at this program of today's event and who see Mar's creativity will jump up to much higher level than ever. The year after the next quarter of a century will be the 50th anniversary, uh, Golden Jubilee of Mao. I will be just 100 years old. <laughs> and I plan to attend the ceremony. I wish everyone the best of health, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in Boston at that time. Thank you. <laughs>